Hello, I'm Danny Barnes from the CCAA, and I'm joined today by the head coach of the Cal Poly Humboldt men's basketball team, Tay Norwood. Coach, thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you, Danny. Well, we're joining Coach today. Just hear a little bit of insight into the into the Lumberjacks and just hear a little bit more about their season. Right now, they've played six games on the year, um, 1-0 and in the CCA. And we're just hoping to hear a little bit about maybe, Coach, what you've learned for, about your team through the first six games this season. Well, you know, we learned a lot, man. We we brought in seven new transfers to go along with uh, six returning players from last year's team. So really just trying to figure out the correct rotations with a lot of new guys coming in and playing a chunk of those minutes, just trying to get those guys to adjust, adjust to one another's, you know, tendencies and, um, and habits. On, on the basketball floor, um, you know, we've I think we got a lot of talent this year, man. We we brought in some transfers that are that have had great success where they were at. Um, you know, two Division One transfers who, who play extreme, you know, significant minutes in two All Conference Division Two transfers as well. So it's just it's just really learning 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 to play with each other um, as we move forward throughout the year. And you guys have had a very unique non-conference schedule so far you guys have to be one of the best you guys are always one of the most traveled teams in the ccaa but you guys got even a couple extra mileage could you tell us a little bit about some of the challenges and some of the preseason schedule or the non-conference schedule you set for your guys this year yeah you know we played in an exempt tournament um the four-year exempt tournament with ourselves in dominguez hills western washington and simon frazier and just for us it didn't, you know, we, we had to go up to Canada, go up to Vancouver this year. So we started out the season on a roll. And that was a challenge within itself, just getting getting to uh, Vancouver uh, with some of the logistics and, and, and some of the things, you know, with the, with the travel from from Humboldt to Canada. So that, that was a that was a long and expensive trip. My, my, <laughs> that I had. Um, but uh, and then, you know, we played out in Denver for this holiday tournament. We played uh, Metro State and Regis. Um, so that took us on a road, and then we had one. We had a game with Dominican sandwiched in between those two games, and then one home game against Sonoma State. So it's we played six games in two and a half weeks, and feel like we've been on a road forever. Well, the one good thing though, you did mention the Sonoma one. Nice to get that first conference win under the under the belt, and you guys were able to do that right before um, or this last weekend, right during the Thanksgiving weekend. So the other yeah. thing. I'd like to talk to you about, um, I go through, I look at the box score. I look at the stats a little bit. Um, some things that really pop out to me this, this year for you guys, your, your free throw percentage, you guys are shooting almost 80% in the conference, um, or on the season. And I think you guys are taking the second most free throws on the season too. Could you just tell us about, has that been a focal point for your team this year? Has it just been the way you guys play? Could you tell me about both those aspects of it? Oh yeah, man. Uh, to piggyback on that, you can see we scored the ball um, at, a, at a at a very efficient rate, um, almost averaging 83, 84 points a game. You know, we try to, uh, you know, throughout the recruiting process this year, we knew we needed to get better guys that can really shoot the basketball, and guys that can score because we struggled to do that last year. So I think that was a, we put an emphasis on getting guys that 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 can make plays and make shots and guys that that can get their own shot. If you see, we got two two guys on our team, uh, Marlon Ruffin and, and Jaden DeWall, who's averaging 18 points a game, both of those guys. So, you know, they've taken a the majority of the shots, guys that can get their own shots and get to the, the basket. And unfortunately, both of those guys are shooting really well from the free throw line as well. And, and you mentioned those guys right there. I think they're fourth and fifth right now in the conference and scoring, like you said, giving you guys a lot of boost on that one. So it's nice when you have those scores, but the other part that pops out to me, apart from just the free throw percentage, was your rebounding. You guys are second right now in the conference in rebounding. I think it's 39 rebounds a game, and you guys are fourth in margin. Could you tell me about that effort? Is that the players? Has that been something as a point of emphasis for this season? Oh well, yeah, you know, we especially on the offensive end, you know, if you look, I think we we one of the top teams in a conference in offensive rebounding. Um, you know, we 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 teach that in practice. You know, to really go in, you know, we, when I, you know, a lot of coaches look at different things on the box scores. When you get box scores, the number one thing I look at when I first get the box scores out is our offensive rebound and percentage. And you get that from your missed shots and then your total offensive rebounds. And we like to offensive rebound at a 40% clip. 
So we put a premium and an emphasis on going to the old glass. You know, we also got, you know, who I, you know, Cam Timmons is, I think, going to be one of the, one of the best big men in the conference this year. He's averaging almost a double double, and and we added uh, and we, Josh Barabom, Division One transfer from North Florida, um, who does a really good job on the glass as well. So you know, I think it's a combination of having uh, big wings and, and and bigs out there that that play with great motors and play with an emphasis on getting the, you know getting the elbows dirty and getting their nose dirty and mixing it up inside. So I think that that's really helped us on the glass. Thank you. Great insight there. So I know I just went through and talked about different things that you would find in the box score or the stat sheet, those other ones, um, things that really have helped the Jacks this season. But could you tell me what are some of the strengths of the team that don't show up maybe in the box score as much? Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. We got right now we're battling the, the injury bug a little bit and playing a little undermanned. So we want to get healthy. You know, I mean, I think that we got a deep team. I think we got 10 guys that can play. If you look at a box score right now, we got 10 guys playing double digit minutes. So I think the strength of our team is going to be in depth and in depth and in, in our numbers. Um, and we, we've gotten some guys throughout the recruiting class that, that I think is going to make an impact. And we got, you know, all league player back in, in Jaden DeWall. I thought Cam Timmons was one of the better bigs in the conference before he went down with an injury for 13 games last year. So, you know, I think that the, our strength is going to be us being able to put multiple people on the floor that can get some stuff done offensively. Thank you very much. Um, so let's say it's mid-February. Somebody from the GNAC is scouting your team. They're just looking at film. What do, the, what do you want them to say about the identity of your team? What would you like them to look at, and how would you like them to describe the identity of your team? Well, you can, if you notice from, from the way we played last year, it's my second year in the league that we really try to get up and down and transition. You know, we're going to play up-tempo brand of basketball. Um, a lot of that's full court man to man and pressing defense. Um, so I want them to, you know, I want them to fear, I guess, or be worrisome of our ability to get up and down and transition and then play hard nose, tough half court and full court man to man defense. Fantastic. So we know the basketball season starts. You don't get that much time before your first game, really. You're, you're, you know, you're, you're working with them in September. You have the first practice in October 15th, and then your first game comes just a couple weeks later. So it's continually an improvement process as you go along. What do you feel needs to, not needs to, but would you like to see improvement within your team to be better on March 1st than you are on December 1st? That's a great question. You know, we, we're scoring the ball at a, at a very efficient rate, but we're not defending as well as I like to see us defend. Um, I think a lot of that is just guys getting comfortable in the system and how we play from a defensive standpoint. Um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a little bit, we play a little bit different than everybody else. So I think that right now with it being such early in the year, we haven't really, really got a full grasp of what we're trying to do from a defensive standpoint. And I think it's hurting us in the standings a little bit. Um, but I like for us to be, you know, talk a little bit more defensively and, and do some different things from a, from a philosophy standpoint, a lot better than we're doing now. And I, and I, and I have the utmost confidence in this team um, that we'll get to where we need to be at. Um, obviously we've got to show up our rotation. I, I knew that with, with, with new players coming into the program, it would be, you know, it, it'd be some, some, some room for those guys having an opportunity to, to get comfortable with each other. Um, I like to see that, you know, become a little bit more uh, documented with the, within those guys. And I think if we do that, we, we, we set ourselves up to have a, make a great run in, in the CCAA. Fantastic. So, as I was mentioning, you, you bring your team together, first practice, October 15th. You might have had some expectations for the team, not just the wins and losses or anything like that. But what have you seen through the first six, team, six games that has really surprised yourself about the team? Something maybe you weren't expecting on October 15th, but you've seen now. You know, I, I, I go back to, to us being able to score the basketball. If you look at our stats from last year, that was a big concern. You know, we were at the bottom of the league in, in, in scoring efficiency and, and points per game. Um, so I'm excited about that. I knew that we brought in some guys that was able to put the ball in the basket from, you know, from just being experienced players um, and being in college. So so I'm excited to see us to, to do, do the things that I hope we can do. Um, and, and hopefully we continue to, to even get even more efficient as, as the season progress. Um, you know, we, we score in 83 points a game. I like to get that up into the 90s, averaging about 90 points per game. 
So that's a goal for, goal of ours um, that we're gonna try to try to do a better job. And it's not just doing it on the offensive end; it's it's doing it from a defensive standpoint. And you know, we we talk about getting more shots than our opponents. We like to get ten to fifteen shots more game. So therefore, even when we're not shooting the ball well, we still give our chance ourselves a chance to win because of the possession game. You know, if you're getting fifteen more shots, and we look at it breaking it down, seven more shots a half. Um, that's fourteen to fifteen shot possessions. That's 30 more points at minimum. You give yourself a chance to, to score. So even when you're not shooting it great that night, you still, because it's a possession game, the more possessions you have, the more opportunities you have to score the basketball. It, it gives you a chance to be in the game night in and night out. So, you know, we, we, we'll look to, you know, and, and there's a number of ways to do that. You know, we talked about getting more possessions. How do you do that? You get more possessions with offensive rebounding the ball. And we're doing that, we're doing that, you know, near the top of the league. Um, forcing turnovers, uh, getting steals, and, and, and limiting our opponents to one shot um, on a defensive end. It's imperative that we, we continue to do those things to help us have those opportunities. And, and I think the numbers will take care of themselves as the season goes on. Fantastic. Great answer there. Fi final question here for you then. So without giving away too much of what maybe you talk about in the locker room or anything that's, you know, you don't want out there in the public, what are some goals you have for your team this year that you guys would like to accomplish during the CCA season? You know, I always say that the CCAA is, you know, a, a strong, a strong conference within itself, especially within the, the West region. As you can see, we got five teams in the NCAA tournament, I think, last last year. So our goal is always to play in the top, you know, 25% of the, of the conference schedule. We want to fin finish in one of the top three or four teams in the league. And I think if you do that, you put yourself in a position to make the NCAA tournament. So it's, it's important that we utilize the, the the regular season and take advantage of all these opportunities that we get. So I tell our guys, every time we play a game, there's an opportunity. You know, you don't want to lose out on those opportunities because you only get 28 of them in the, in the regular season for ourselves. You know, our 26 scheduled games and then the, the two games in the exempt tournament. So I like to see us finish in, in, the, top, in the top 25% of the league or the top four in the league. And I think if you do that, you put yourself in a position not only to make the NCAA tournament, but if you finish in, you know, in that top quadrant of the league, you, you're one of the best teams in, 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 in the West region. Fantastic. And you're right. You're absolutely right. This has been a brutal league top to bottom for a lot of years. But like you said, they, there's a lot of credit there at the top. And you're obviously setting yourself up for regional opportunities if you can be up there. Um, as you, as we mentioned a little earlier, you guys are one and zero right now in conference with that win over Sonoma and coach, as you mentioned, you're, you loaded up this first half of the schedule with a lot of road games. So that means you're going to be blessed on the second half with a lot more home games, but you guys will be on the road this week down there at Dominguez Hills and at East Bay. So season, season is rolling along. And I just want to say. Good luck the rest of the way. And just thank you for just taking a couple minutes to just give the fans a little insight into the Lumberjacks men's basketball program, letting them hear from your words. I appreciate you, Danny. Thank you so much um, for, for taking the time to, to, you know, give some insight on what we have and what we bring to the table. I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, fantastic. We'll talk to you again, and hopefully we're able to talk again in March. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate you. Thank you.